Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video today I'm here with Roni Kenshin the Kyoto disturbance art episode number two reaction so the previous episode um, yeah uh, Kenshin has begun his journey towards Kyoto and uh, everyone else is trying to follow him you know Sanosuke was pissed off when he heard that Kenshin left uh, Yahiko's getting ready um, you know like and uh, stuff like you know like they're, they're getting ready to go but um, Hajime comes in, Saito Hajime comes in and tries to stop them because he thinks that they will be like a liability towards Genshin and they are like Genshin's weaknesses. Sanosuke tries to prove him wrong but gets beaten but his resolve is shown by the end of it and he says that we'll grow from here onwards. It's not as if you guys were also born like this. You guys also learn. So that same thing will happen to us as well. Let us go. At which Saito by the end was like whatever, you know want to go you go then um yeah so everyone's going to be joining them uh later on uh you know like Me megumi gives uh kaoru uh, a little bit of uh like a not a talking about how she she's just moping around while at least kenshin went and told her goodbye none of the others got even got a goodbye so you know that kind of thing and yeah now uh you know like megumi will be staying here obviously she has her patience but kaoru in the end also decides to go so that's where it ended so let's see what happens today let us begin i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here think it whichever is your preference and let's get started okay here's the countdown three two one go <clears throat> hmm Is this someone here? Is this someone here? No, I don't think so. Oh no! Um, Aoshi, that was his name, wasn't it? Oh, he's come here to find Genshin. Yep, he's come here to find Kenshin. Right. Hmm. Hmm. On the East Sea Road. Okay. Yeah, well, a lot happened. Hmm. Damn. Oh, wait. So, hi, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> wow. He's like, yeah, I know about you. Hmm. Yeah, he's going to follow him. Oh, he's going to wait here. Hmm. I was thinking he's going to follow him. Oh. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like maybe if he follows Genshin, you know, maybe he can help them. What the hell? Yeah, where did this guy come from? I've seen him in the, him in the opening, but you know. Oh uh, boy. Oh lord, yep. What? Yo, are they? Oh, did he... That disrespect, I just realized where they were sitting. What? Okay. Yeah, he's not happy. What you guys are doing here in front of the graves of the. Oh, he's letting them live but i know what they're going to do they're going to act smart here yeah okay right you know what oh great yeah that's why you guys fight together so that oh wow oh damn four versus one is even four versus one is not working great oh, <laughs> oh. He's giving them so many chances. Even after all of this, he's like, yeah. But obviously, these people won't listen, so, you know. He's still letting them live. That is crazy. And these guys, like idiots, are continuing to attack him. Uh, no, no. Oh, yeah. Oh my god, what the hell? Whoa. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, okay, yep. There you go. He gave you at least three to four chances to leave this place. But you guys gotta be like idiots. Bruh. I'm guessing. So, Kitsa Sojiro. One off.
Yeah. Well, it's pretty obvious. These guys are trash. Whoa. Damn, now he's gonna go. Wow. All right. Mm -hmm. Right, Shishio. Oh, she might be the must be the other attendant. Yeah. Okay. 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 Mm. I see. Hmm. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't want to put them in danger. <laughs> well, hmm. It's so someone's here. What the? Who? Oh, I thought someone attacked him. That's why. Okay, never mind. It's someone else. Yeah. What the? No, oh, I think <laughs> she's gonna rob them. She's that girl in the opening. Okay, she she okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they just left, <laughs> bruh. Okay. Is she a, like a Kunoichi? Yeah. Oh, I guess I was gonna say, yeah, 16 is a kid. But I guess in this day and age, mm, I don't know. Damn. 
Okay. Well, now should rob them. <laughs> Guess it's like. <laughs> Right. Household origin. <laughs> yeah, that is true. I don't think that's what he was trying to say. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, you you think he's gonna Oh she thinks it's like expensive, yep. Damn, he he's just taking it. <laughs> oh whoa, he just took it! <laughs> Um, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, you are a scammer. She's go he's gonna whack her, I think. Oh no, it's a Sakabato, so... Yep. Yeah, it won't get much. <laughs> yeah, let's see. <laughs> Bro. Yeah, that was your own fault. Oh my god. This girl has a lot of... Oh boy. Oh. Well, he's not happy. <laughs> well. Hmm. Oh no, hopefully they don't get framed for it because Genshin has a... You think so? I thought she was a kunoichi or something. Or is she a kunoichi? <laughs> I don't know. I thought, like, you know, the, 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 then she's just a bandit. Okay, uh, let's get out of here. Oh my god, that's what I was wondering why did she <laughs> follow him here? <laughs> Go back, so that's her Okay. Yeah, that's her home. Yeah, that's why you're robbing others. <laughs> I guess. Hmm. Wait. Oh no, it's Oh, 
Oh no, it's Maki Maki. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you, you saw that guy was. Oh lord, here we go. Oh god. Huh. Oh god, wait, did he break the whole bridge? Oh, he... <laughs> Damn, he just broke the bridge. Oh, oh wow, alright. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, when he was a Hitokiri Battosa, yep. Hmm. Oh, great. Yep, it's. It's them. Oh lord, the Onyaban. I was thinking, he's just talking about Aoshi. I think so. Yep. Oh no. Yeah, well, a lot happened. Oh boy. Like when she said that I'm looking for someone and their friends, you know, I was like, oh, it's, it might be them. Okay. And that was today's episode. Okay, I'll keep today's discussion section a little bit shorter. I'm busy this week, so from next week onwards, uh, the normal discussions will resume. So I'll just talk about today's episode as a whole, my overall impressions. Um, so, right. So first and foremost, today's episode had quite a few important things. First and foremost, we got, um, you know, like to see a few new characters. For example, that kid, I... I forgot his name. His name was like something. Like uh, forgotten. Like it was something. Um she he was okay, you know what? Okay, here we go. Sojiro Seta. Um wait a minute. Okay, 
Right, so Jiro said that. Um, he was sent by Shishio, and the other, the, the four monks that they uh, encountered, they were just sent as like sacrificial pawns because Shishio probably wanted to test the, like how strong, you know, like how she is. And uh, that is why he was there, Seta was there just sitting and observing them. Now, um, yeah, so we get to see Shishio here, we get to see that kid Seta over here and a few new, like, you know, introductions here. Not only that, we saw how Seta uh, kind of like, you know, like at first, because Shishio at first went to find Kenshin directly, but then when he didn't see him there, he was like, oh, I'll just wait. But then Seta came and they kind of like, you know, kind of riled him up a little bit. And now Aoshi's thinking, oh, should I go, go to Kyoto then? That's what he's thinking now. So he's going to go to Kyoto. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. Now, not only that, but I... I don't know. I think... I'm not 100% sure, but I think Megumi is also going to follow them because... I don't know, like, it, because, you know, in the opening, it seems like she's going with them to Kyoto. You know, like, the ending part of the opening where you see all the characters are moving towards Kyoto. Like, Megumi is also there. So, the fact that Megumi is only, uh, like, just here, uh, uh, you know, in, uh, like, taking care of the dojo, I feel like somehow she'll maybe find someone, like, some replacement to take care of the dojo. But what about her patients, though? I'm not really sure. Uh, maybe, maybe you know the 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 doctor that she is uh, helping now. I I don't remember his name. Maybe he can help in that situation. But I feel like Megumi is going to follow them. I'm not sure when or how, but I think so. So either way, let's wait and see what happens. So you know everyone will be like going towards Kyoto, following Genshin. Right. So that's what's going on over here, and then. Um, in Kenshin's side, we meet, what was her name, Misao, I think, yeah, and uh, turns out she was like trying to rob some thugs, some Yakuza members, without knowing they were Yakuza, like, you know, members, and now, like, and she was kind of talking about someone she wants to meet, and that's why she was coming here, but now she's going back to Kyoto, and, uh, you know, turns out it is Aoshi, and uh, so from her, um, from her, like, what she said to Kenshin, it seems like um, she was an orphan, I think. And, you know, wait a minute. Where is that part? Uh, okay, here we go. The protector. No, not this part. This part is where she reveals that, you know. Where's the part where she says that I'm going... Mm. Oh, here we go. You came to Tokyo here by yourself. Why is that? I was looking for someone. Um, quite a while ago, back in the Bakumatsu era, I lost my family shortly after I was born. There you go. I was all alone until someone took me in and raised me. I'm looking for him and his friends. Yeah, so uh, she was taken care of by, by the group, by, by Aoshi's group. And she's like, I'm coming, I'm, I've come here to meet them and, you know, like, yeah, reunite with them. But, you know, like now she's going back to Kyoto, uh, Kyoto that, that whole section. So that is what happened to her and uh, how she came in contact with Aoshi. And Genshin didn't really realize at the beginning, I guess he probably had a little bit of an inkling for a moment, but then when she, like, directly said, that, oh, like, you know, he, he protected, like, you know, like, uh, like, everyone from the shadows, you know, that, this and that, and then she, she literally brings up the name, and Genshin was like, oh, Shinobori Aoshi? Now, you know, that, that whole part. I do wonder what's going to happen with this whole direction where this plot is going, because, um... I don't know, man, like, this is like a weird type of a situation, because, like, she, like, she, how she wants to, you know, defeat Genshin, kill Genshin, but, in a way, like, Genshin isn't really responsible for his, like, you know, friend's death, you know, like, that dude, I forgot that guy's name, he was the one who, you know, like, shot them with the Gatling gun, and, and um, you know, they came to protect, 
uh, Aoshi and sacrifice their lives. You know, all of, I've forgotten all of their names, so I cannot really remember. Uh, but I do remember what happened. And, uh, you know, but obviously Aoshi wants to, like, defeat Genshin himself. But then now that we've seen this girl has come in contact with Genshin, and uh, I'm sure, like, she'll meet Aoshi on the way somewhere. And uh, I don't know, it, it's kind of, I, I, I feel like it's going to get complicated a little bit. Mm, but we'll see. Let's wait and see what happens. Okay, right. And uh, yeah, and that is basically what was what's going on in today's episode. Now, um, is there anything I want to discuss about? Uh, no, nothing much, I guess. Saito's still here, so you know that's like he, he's actually still here. Like I, I, I was I, in the previous episode as, as well. I was like, oh, she, he's probably here because Sanosuke and like you know they are here, and he wants to keep an eye on them for the time being so that they don't go or try to go towards Kyoto. But we saw what happened with that. You know, Sanosuke convinced him, and he was like, yeah, whatever, do whatever you want. And uh, I guess I'm guessing. Okay, you know what? Maybe like I'm assuming this is Saito we're talking about. He probably realized that Shishio's men are here and something is going on, something weird is going on. So he decided to stay here for the time being and make sure like no problem occurs. And that's why he's still here. And you know, when Aoshi comes in, he goes and kind of stops Aoshi from killing Megumi. Um, and then, you know, now that Aoshi knows what he'll be doing, I guess the threat for Ao you know, from Aoshi is at least subsided but you know like we saw um shishio's men is still here like shishio sent that kid set set or something like that i forgot his name um uh, he sent him to like you know keep an eye on aoshi and uh, you know like stuff like that um so saito's probably here making sure everything stays okay everything stays like fine for now like nobody's in danger here and when the danger will, will probably have left, then Saito will probably start moving towards Kyoto. But yeah, but like I said, I think Megumi will be following them to Kyoto. Or I, I, I don't know. I might be wrong, but at least that's what I think is going to happen. I don't know exactly how that's going to happen because, like I said, she has her patience to take care, take care of and all that stuff. Maybe she'll find someone to replace her or something like that, but I feel like she's, she's going to go. Uh, we'll see. Right. Um, there you go. Also, like I said, uh, Misao, yeah, that's her name. Misao, I, you know, like, looking at her dress and everything, I thought she was like a, like a ninja, like a kunoichi or something. She also uses, like, kunais and stuff. And I'm still not sure, but I think she might actually be a kunoichi. Because like the way she moves like you know she jumps around and you know like yeah her movement and everything is probably like a ninja or something right but we'll see uh because i, I guess that will make sense because you know when oniwaban was a group of like you know like ninjas they were a group of shinobis um they you know they were in the dark they they always stayed in the shadows to protect you know like the like the shogun and all that all that stuff you know so it would make sense that the person that um aoshi who was the leader of Oniaban, took in and you know like took care of as a kid that girl would become or try to become a kunoichi when she grows up because she like you know like idolizes that person aoshi and aoshi being a shinobi she probably said something like oh i want to become a kunoichi and that's why now she is like a like a ninja or something like that. It would make sense, you know. Um, right. Okay. And in the end, you see Kenshin did say that, oh, like, you know, like, I'm kind of repeated the name, like, uh, like Aoshi, uh, Shinomori Aoshi. And she looked at him like, oh, you, you know him? That kind of way. I feel like Kenshin in the next episode will probably try to brush that aside and try to trick her into being like, oh, no, like, you know, like, I've heard him. He's very famous. I don't know him personally. Something like that he'll probably tell. Because I doubt Kenshin wants to like reveal anywhere that she he knows like you know because it'll be a problem if she if he reveals here that oh I know Aoshi. What else what is he going to say? 
to her. She's definitely going to have a lot of questions to ask him. He'll be like, where is he? Where is, like, you know, the others and everything? And, you know, like, it's, it's a, it's, it's a, it's going to be like a plethora of questions that Kenshin won't know how to answer. Um, yeah, but there you go. Let's wait and see what happens. Um, oh, I forgot to mention the battle. That was another thing I wanted to talk about. Um, Aoshi fighting those four monks. So his fighting style has changed a little bit. It seemed like he's using a katana, but then, you know, he takes out two kodachis out of it and he's like dual wielding it. And yeah, the fact that he, like, it's like, this is the thing, you know, like these type of like, <laughs> like random ass mob, like characters, like enemies who just come in and like every single show you'll see the same thing happens. You know, even though the person who they're trying to fight against or whatever, even though they're extremely strong, they are completely clueless. And even if the opponent shows them that, oh, see, this is how much better than I am, um, like, you know, than you guys, I'm, this is how much better I am uh, compared to you guys, then it never goes through this thick skulls that, yeah, you know what, maybe it's time to leave. Nope, they, obviously their overinflated ego compels them to try to attack more and then they end up getting killed. I was surprised seeing how she even gave them any chance. Like I thought she was, he was immediately going to cut them as soon as he saw them sitting on top of the graves. You know, he not only did he give them a lot of chances, but he like actually told them to leave as well, even after they spat, spat on the grave. You know, like first and foremost, they were sitting there like making a mess out of the place. That's number one problem. Number two problem, they were sitting on the graves. Number three, even when Aoshi was like, leave, you know, they didn't leave. Number four, they spat on the grave when uh, Aoshi like riled them up and be, Rashi was like, leave or I'll kill, like cut you guys apart and I'll cut Shishu apart as well. You know, and they still didn't leave. Like more so they spat on him, on, on the grave. Um, and then I think Aoshi again warned him, them. They tried to attack Aoshi and Aoshi dodged it and then she again warned, warned them. He was like, leave. And even after that, when they still didn't listen, Aoshi just was like, yeah, there you go. It's over. But then this guy comes in. Um, uh, yeah. Set, what was his name? Seto or whatever. And he says, like, when Aoshi was like, oh, it's pretty merciless of you to send, um, you know, like, and I don't want to cooperate with the person who sends like um like pawns like you know like sacrificial pawns to like do the job or uh, like act like a testing thing um at which he's like oh but you're quite merciless yourself as you knew they were pawns but you slew all of them what what could he have done he gave them four warnings i think like people usually get one or two warnings he gave them four warnings back to back to leave they didn't leave more so, they tried to attack him, and even after they attacked him, he still gave them a warning and told them to leave. They still didn't listen. What, what are you supposed to do then? What can someone do? Like, what, 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 what do you want him to do? You know? Like, you're trying to, you're trying to like, you know, like, I don't know, like, like emotionally manipulate me? Like, you're saying like, oh, you knew they were pawns, but you still... Nah, man, like, like, I could have understand, like, you know, what he's saying here. I could have, like, you know, said, like, yeah, you're right. If Aoshi didn't give them any time and immediately defeated them and, like, killed them, I could have understood. But he gave them four warnings. Even after they attacked him, he still gave them a warning to leave. And they didn't leave. So, you know, yeah, they got what that was coming to them. Right. And like, what the hell? You you send people to like, you know, like do this, and you expect me to just, you know, whatever, man. Like, I I just. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Ash is not not pleased. The way he, he was looking at him, like you know, just yeah. Okay, so yeah, and that, that whole thing. So uh, yeah, I just I wanted to talk about that as well, that whole section. That was absolutely ridiculous. The way those guys kept 
you know like testing his patience and just kept doing that good lord <clears throat> right oh yeah the other thing i want to talk about the whole uh you know like double kodachi that he was using so wait a minute at first i thought that he switched his weapons you know i thought like oh maybe he like you know after like you know going out like you know kind of fighting with kenshin maybe he switched to like a katana because he wants to fight kenshin like in a way like you know that was like i don't know representing his resolve or whatever i was thinking but no it's not that he's just using two kodachis now here we go like when the monks are attacking him they were like a long katana i thought a kodachi was his weapon like this is the thing Ashi has done this before as well but he 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 tries to trick the opponent you know into kind of misunderstanding what he's using because obviously while fighting there's a lot of things you need to keep in mind a lot of factors that come into play like while fighting you need to observe the opponent see what type of weapon they're using you know and make sure that you are within the like the length or whatever within the range or out of the range while fighting you know that type of thing you need to keep an like keep an eye on and uh, i guess like a longer katana the range is quite big but if you go close enough then it goes out of range you cannot really properly attack you know so they thought that he's using a long katana so they went as close as possible to try to render it useless but then when he takes out two um, Kodachi from it, immediately they realize they've made a mistake because Kodachi is shorter and the range is shorter. So now they're in the perfect range for them to attack, something like that, you know. So you need to, like, you know, like, and like I said, he did this before as well. I think in the previous season, literally, he tried to, you know, trick Kenshin like this by, like, using, like, I think, like, the, 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 the striped arms, like, you know, whatever, I f forgot, like, what he did. But something like that he did to trick Kenshin into thinking that his attacks and his arms are like longer than it is or something like that he did. You know, so that was him, wasn't it? Or am I mixing it up with someone else? Someone did this. I remember someone doing this, using this trick against Kenshin. That was Aoshi, wasn't it? Or am I making a mistake? Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but anyways, um, so he again did this here. Like, you know, like he tricked his opponents into thinking a certain thing. But then when they go close enough, he then reveals the, you know, like the secret or the trick to it, which, and now it's too late, you know, they're well within range, so it's, it's done. And yeah, so there you go, and that's why. Yeah, so it is like a, like, he like, he has like two, two Kodachis like attached to each other, so he like, like unlocks it like this. Yeah. Two Kodachis in one sheet, and and oh, there you go. A dual Kodachi, and and there you go. It's too late now. He, they have come well within his range to for him to attack, and like good enough range for a Kodachi. And that's how they got defeated. And he like sliced them up, like not even like one attack. He like, literally sliced them up, chopped them up into pieces. That is crazy. Right. And there you go that was that was today's episode um yeah let's wait and see what happens uh, everyone's going to a Kyoto and now Kenshin has met Misao who is uh like Kodachi's uh, no what the hell <laughs> what <laughs> how she's how she's um I guess you could say you know he, he took care of her when she was a kid and she idolizes him that kind of thing so yeah, let's see how this develops. So that is it. Thanks for watching. This was my reaction to Roni Kenshin episode, uh, um, Kyoto Disturbance episode number two. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, or you haven't subscribed, comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know, I'll check them out. That is it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next week with another episode of Roni Kenshin. Until then, goodbye, and have a nice day.